Okay, so that's the, that's the wave function, the solution of the wave equation for a transverse wave on a, on a string, okay? And you could, from boundary conditions, or if it was a traveling wave, basically A is related to how, how much you're shaking it, okay? The amplitude is related to how much you're shaking it. And again, the velocity, which is equal to omega over K, uh, this, these uh, omega and K will be related to the tension in the string the um, the mass density of the string and so forth. Okay. Now, what? Let's look at a different kind of wave. Okay, uh, ones that we've already seen before. Also, electromagnetic waves, so light waves. Now, the underlying physics which goes into the wave equation for light waves is um, are just Maxwell's equations. So Maxwell's equations tell you how how um, the electric field and the magnetic field um, depend on each other. Uh, depend on the sources which are present, the uh, charges and currents, uh, and so forth. And so um, if, if we uh, combine Maxwell's equations in a particular way, remember there's four Maxwell's equations, and if we combine them in a particular way, we can get two wave equations actually. Now we get one wave equation for the electric field and one w wave equation for the magnetic field, B. And they would look like this in generic way. C squared time, that's the, C is the velocity of light, is equal to, I mean, c squared times the second derivative of the electric field with respect to position, x, this is obviously one dimension, okay, is equal to uh, the second derivative of the electric field with respect to time. So that looks pretty much, the and the um, magnetic field one is the same except for that e is replaced by b. And this basically looks very similar to the transverse wave um, on a string because this is a generic, essentially a generic, um, uh, wave equation for a transverse wave um, with speed, uh, in this case the electromagnetic field propagates with speed c, the speed of light. And if we solve these equations, okay, you'll find that the electric field um, is given by, again, an amplitude times, again, a sinusoidal wave function, and the magnetic field is given by the same uh, form of equation, but now the uh, the prefactor, the amplitude is, is slightly different, but it's related. Um, and we also notice that the, the electric and the magnetic fields are actually uh, perpendicular to each other, okay? Uh, one is along, if one of them is along y, if the electric field is along y, then the magnetic field is along z, if they're propagating along the x direction. So here I've basically found a really nice kind of uh, graphic for a, an electric, uh, an electromagnetic wave, a light wave traveling in the positive x direction, and you can see <clears throat> that um, the, uh, uh, you can see how they're transverse to each other, they're perpendicular to each other, and you can see that what, what, what the wave, what's waving is just the amplitude, uh, the strength of the electric and magnetic fields, and they, and they, and they propagate together. Okay, so it turned, you know, uh, so the, the A, if we make A is equal to uh, e no, E0, E0, that's the uh, magnitude of the electric field component, then the magnitude of the um, uh, of the uh, magnetic field component is just uh, e naught over c. Okay, and so here are two examples of of um, wave equations and their solutions, the wave functions that result from those equations, and kind of the um, graphical form of what they look like. Okay, now it's important. Um, it's interesting that the you know an electromagnetic wave naturally contains two components, an electric and magnetic field, and you, you can talk about one or the other, but in fact the, the electromagnetic wave contains both. Usually in optics we talk about the electric field because the electric field is what actually jiggles charges around, okay, uh, like the electrons in a material, and so that's what we're usually concerned with, but of course the magnetic field is there too, it's just that a lot of the materials we talk about in optics are non-magnetic, and so they don't respond to magnetic fields, okay. And so even though that part is there, it doesn't have a whole lot to do usually with the problem, but there are certainly some cases where you have to take into account both the electric and magnetic fields explicitly. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so so now let's um, consider um, the case uh, of matter waves, okay? And we need to find its uh, wave equation, and it turns out that, that the wave equation for matter waves is the Schrodinger equation. <clears throat> 